In this lecture, you will learn about Raman spectroscopy. More precisely, about molecular vibrations, uh, Raman scattering effect, uh, its uh, classical description, and also key aspects, pros and cons about Raman spectroscopy, and some techniques where it is applied. And these uh, techniques are widely used uh, uh, in biology and photosynthesis uh, uh, studies. So let's start uh, with molecular vibrations, which are periodic movements of atoms in a molecule. Um, when the nuclei uh, move in respect to each other in a way that the center of the mass of a molecule does not change its position in the space. In other words, uh, it means that uh, all the atoms in the molecule are vibrating with the same frequency and they pass through their equilibrium uh, position simultaneously. So uh, in multi-atom molecules, we have uh, 3n minus 6 uh, vibrational degrees of freedom, with an exception for linear molecules, where we have 3n minus 5 uh, the vibrational degrees of freedom. And uh, these uh, independent vibrations are called uh, normal modes. And here you see an example of vibrational modes for a carbon dioxide mo molecule where we have uh, three atoms in a molecule. It is linear, where we ha therefore we have uh, four uh, normal modes. Uh, two are stretching modes, symmetrical and antisymmetrical, and two bending modes. The easiest way to model molecular vibrations is to assume that atoms in a molecule are uh, balls and uh, chemical bonds connecting them are massless springs. Then the restoring force uh, of a spring is uh, dependent uh, on the distance between atoms uh, when they change their equilibrium position. And uh, then our model is a um, harmonic oscillator with harmonic motion, which comes from Hooke's law. And the frequency of vibrations for such uh, harmonic oscillator is expressed with this uh, formula. Here you see uh, vibrational energy levels for a harmonic oscillator. Uh, however, such assumptions makes uh, mathematics easier, but in reality, molecular is unharmonic oscillator. And uh, then uh, vibrational energy uh, levels looks like that. Uh, because uh, when the displacement uh, during large amplitude vibrations are uh, big, a uh, molecule can dissociate because Hooke's law is not valid anymore. And uh, why we are interested in these uh, molecular vibrations and why to study them? First of all, vibrational levels of particular molecule depends on uh, its uh, structure, more precisely on its constituent atoms, chemical bonds between them and the symmetry of the molecule. Therefore, uh, from molecular vibrations uh, in our sample, we can uh, get the chemical identity of molecules, their conformation, interactions, uh, and uh, other information. And to access uh, these uh, vibrations, the best technique is uh, Raman spectroscopy. So. In Raman spectroscopy, uh, we have a, a light frequency uh, change after it is scattered uh, by a molecule. And this uh, scattering is inelastic. And here you see a dis classical description for this um, effect. Uh, polarization is induced in a molecule by oscillating electric field of incom incoming light and uh, then uh, this induced dipole is uh, uh, scattering uh, light isotropically with or without exchanging its energy with vibrations of a molecule. And uh, in detail, uh, scattering can be described using uh, a theory of quantum mechanics. Uh, however, for basic principles, we can use uh, classical mechanics and here we will try to do that. So as I mentioned before, uh, polarization is induced in a molecule by oscillating electric field of incoming light and induced uh, dipole moment is uh, proportional to electric field and polarizability. And the uh, incident electric uh, field is a periodic function, so it means that induced dipole moment is also periodic function. And when uh, uh, nuclei are vibrating in a molecule, uh, they have a precise uh, frequency. 
uh, this distance uh, between nuclear is changing, it's also periodic uh, uh, time function. So then uh, with the changing distance between nuclei, pol polarizability is also changing. And uh, for small amplitudes uh, of vibrations in a molecule, we can uh, write uh, polarizability as a, a Taylor series. And then uh, our induced uh, dipole moment is uh, expressed like that, uh, not taking into account the uh, highest order Taylor terms. And then using some uh, uh, mathematical formulas, uh, we get our final expression, uh, which is very important because uh, from this uh, expression, we can see that induced dipole uh, are uh, scattering light uh, in uh, three frequencies. So first one is uh, the same as incident light frequency. It's called elastic Rayleigh scattering. The second one is of uh, higher frequency. It's called anti-Stokes uh, Raman scattering. And the third one is of a lower frequency. It's called uh, uh, Stokes Raman scattering. Anti-Stokes uh, signal is uh, usually lower than Stokes because it starts uh, from excited vibrational levels. Uh, which are less populated in equilibrium uh, state uh, than the lowest uh, energy uh, levels. And the uh, Rayleigh scattering is usually three to six orders of magnitude higher uh, than uh, Raman scattering. And uh, now uh, briefly about Raman spectroscopy in which uh, we measure the energy change between uh, scattered and incident uh, light and this uh, difference is called Raman shift and Raman shift is direct uh, access to vibrational energy levels of molecule and here you see an example spectra of uh, Raman scattering where Raman uh, scattering intensity is a function of Raman shift however for small molecules not, uh, ba not all uh, Vibrational bands are uh, in the Raman spectrum due to selection rules, um, but uh, for large molecules, selection rules only concern the intensity of the bands, and the selection rules are not discussed in this uh, lecture. And uh, some pros and cons about Raman spectroscopy it gives us a narrow bands uh, in a spectrum, it can be uh, non invasive. Uh, with the easy and fast sample preparation and it's compatible with the aqua samples uh, but um, some drawbacks are that uh, spontaneous Raman scattering is a weak process and sometimes uh, a Raman signal is lost uh, in a high fluorescence background. However, there are techniques uh, developed uh, which enable us to get uh, enhanced uh, Raman signal and now I will discuss a few of them. First is the resonance Raman scattering, uh, which is based on um, resonance effect when the incident light uh, energy uh, matches um, the energy of uh, molecules excited state and then a dramatic increase of uh, uh, six orders of magnitude of Raman signal can be expected. A re resonance Raman spectroscopy is highly selective technique on uh, in individual molecules in a complex uh, medium based on their absorption properties. And this uh, technique is uh, widely used for biological chromophores and photosynthetic complexes uh, containing chlorophylls and carotenoids. Another technique is uh, stimulated Raman spectroscopy uh, where um, Raman amplification occurs when the energy of intense pump beam is transferred uh, to the weak signal beam by uh, uh, stimulated Raman scattering and it can be obtained when a pump and a Stokes beam is incident on a sample and the uh, difference in frequency between them uh, matches the particular molecular vibrational level of uh, uh, molecules. And then we can uh, uh, see the gain of a Stokes beam and the loss of a pump beam. Orders of magnitude uh, increase of a signal can be observed by this technique and it can be used for detection of uh, molecules with uh, coherent molecular vibrations. 
And the last method I would like to talk about, uh, which can be used uh, to increase the Raman signal, is surface enhanced Raman uh, scattering, where um, uh, Raman signal increase is observed for molecules adsorbed on uh, uh, nanostructured or roughened metal uh, surfaces. And then we can see Raman uh, enhancement up to six orders of magnitude. And this um, increase is uh, observed due to field enhancement and chemical enhancement but the main uh, reason is the field uh, effect uh, when we have uh, surface uh, plasmons created by incident light on uh, nanostructured metal surfaces then polarizability of the molecules is increased and as well as the uh, raman uh, uh, scattering intensity and uh, uh, this uh, uh, method is uh, uh, very useful for chemical and biochemical analysis and the main factor for such enhancement is the distance between the molecule and the metal nanostructure. And uh, I would like to summarize, uh, we discussed uh, Raman spectroscopy which is an excellent tool to access molecular vibrations and despite uh, spontaneous Raman scattering is uh, very weak process. We can use uh, linear and nonlinear optical methods uh, to increase it. And Raman scattering is applied in many spectroscopical te techniques uh, to identify uh, molecules, uh, to study their conformation or interactions we are involved in, even in vivo. Thank you for your attention.